limitless place. And then you can and fall then out. And it can be like totally in the ego and, you know, <coughs> traumatized. Yes. And how, oh, to, okay. I see what you're how to stay in the life. Oh yeah, that, that's it. Okay, so we do, we do an exercise here, which we'll be doing a bit later on, called the observer. Um, and the observer, uh, or self-inquiry. Um, so, 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 you know, thoughts thoughts keep passing by, and um, I will, we'll do a little bit now because I think it's appropriate. So, uh, you know, in the in the observer exercise. So, now anything. Anything that passes by, you know, there has to be an observer of it, okay? So just quickly run through, some of you are more aware of this, but, you know, like, if, if this pen is going, going like that, like nobody in this room, I'm going to do it really quickly, but nobody's the pen. You cannot be the pen because the pen is in front of what you are, yeah? So everyone is observing the pen, no one is the pen, okay? Because pens come and go, they're sometimes here, they're sometimes like, you're not the pen, you're the witnesser or the observer or the, of the pen. Now you can, now what, are, what is my true self? Can my true self be something which is limited or something that is passing? Or is my true self something that is not limited and not passing? So, so everyone agrees they're not the pen, but what about thoughts? You know, thoughts are passing by, they just sort of pass by. Sometimes a thought's here, sometimes it's meandering across, it's gone. Then there's another thought. So, are you a thought, or can a thought be you? Or are you that which is always here, is something prior to the thoughts, even before thoughts? So there is, now this is, this is an exercise, there is a witnesser, or an observation, or a detached detached observing of thoughts, which is not thoughts. Like, nobody here is the pen. One is, you are the observer of the pen, the pen is not you. And there's that clear detachment that, you know, you're not going to argue that the pen is me, because there's clear witnessing that you are the witnesser of the pen. Now this happens with the thoughts. You know, but if you're identified or too enmeshed or too interested in something, it seems like you are that thing and you can't get detached witnessing because there's so much identification and interest or projected meaning. But if you let that go, then you'll start to have well, this is a spiritual experience that there is a clear witnesser of thoughts which is not the thoughts. And the witnesser is more you. And you actually you can let go of the thoughts and you realize that you are that eternal, timeless, limitless witnessing. And then you're letting go of the thoughts as being your self-centered you'll start to get more into these experiences of oneness, you see. Okay, we'll, we'll do more in depth on that. So, now, when you experience, when you have the experience, the first experience, that actually thoughts have got nothing to do with you, you know, there is a witnessing of thoughts and you can forget being interested or attached or lost in the thoughts. You're just this watcher, this witnesser of thoughts. Now, if you, when you get there, of course, the thing that happens is, look, what, why do I lose it after I've done the exercise and I'm in the witnesser, is because you get hooked in. You, get, you allow yourself to get hooked in by the next thought or the next drama, you see. So, so what happens is like, and we'll try and get everyone into the observer today, uh, hopefully, but um, if, you, if there's that clear experiencing of witnessing of thoughts, then you cannot, you cannot pick up a thought with identification. Otherwise you get back hooked into being the thoughts. And when you get hooked into the being the thoughts, then the next drama and the next thing, you, you just get embroiled in it, you see. So you ha it's like a constant identified process. Yeah? Um, there is that Buddhist philosophy yes. which says, says deny yourself. Uh, is it is it down that road? Well, it, it, it's don't get identified with the ego. Mm. So, if uh, so, if there is the experiencing that there is witnessing of thoughts, and you are the witnesser of thoughts, mm, if you have that spiritual experience, then you are now experiencing yourself as being limitless, 
the limitless, eternal, timeless witnessing prior to the identification of thoughts. And so now oneself, oneself in classical literature, it's, it's the self with the capital S, um, meaning the infinite, timeless, eternal self of God consciousness or Christ consciousness. So oneself is the self, the limitless, the timeless, the eternal oneness. If one then now hooks in or re-identifies with um, the limited self, i.e. the ego self, or the contracted self, one hooks back into the limited, then one's experiencing of self becomes limited. So one now returns to the ego states of consciousness. So in, in the beginning, if you start, you experience yourself as the ego consciousness, i.e. I am my thinking, I am the body, I experience myself as these thoughts in this little contract, little body in this center of, of the room, you know, and you guys, and then I project, you guys are all little separate self-centers in those parts of the room. So it's a, you know, it's a, self, it's a projection of experiencing self as self-centered. So as you suddenly realize, it's like a ha, a ha, a ha, a ha, a ha spiritual experience. Suddenly, oh no, I always thought I was my thinking and my body, but there's a witnesser here which is witnessing my thoughts and my body, and it's limitless, it's one, it's like a oneness, it's like a timeless field. And then that's the spiritual experience. Now, if you get that experience, then suddenly it's like you can go back into the limited self, into the contracted. How did that happen? Well, it just happens. When you're in that limited witnessing experience, then if you just pick up a thought with identification, then you suddenly zoom back into the limited self. I, I'll explain this very easily. Now, there's something more um, that I wanted to share from A Course in Miracles. One of the first lessons, which is why it's a mystical teaching, and this um, and it's a teaching of enlightenment, or a mystical teaching, is one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless. All my thoughts are meaningless. It's very, it's critical critical uh, lesson, and it's an advanced teaching. Why, does, why, why do people always experience this as, as a limited, the limited ego? Why isn't everyone in the eternal presence? Why isn't everyone in oneness or holiness all the time? And it's because when thoughts are given special meaning, I mean, we can use the word special in different ways, like if you higher power your thoughts, if you make them special, if you make them magical, whatever word you want to use them, then suddenly your referencing becomes from the thoughts. Yeah? Yeah, rather than being from the limitless or the holiness or the oneness or the timeless. If any thought is treated um, with, is identified as being special or important, you zoom in and you become the thoughts. Okay? When all thoughts are um, meaningless, i.e., you know, like, I can put, I can just put this pen in front of everybody, but this, this pen is like a meaningless, uninteresting object. So nobody's going to say, I'm the pen. Yeah? Everyone's going to know that I'm, my witnessing is bigger than the pen. I'm not the pen. If someone was like a pen addict, you know, like they, they, they make pens their higher power, and they get really fixated on pens, then as soon as the pen goes up, they suddenly become enmeshed with the pen, they think they are the pen, and they lose their sense of self, and they become the pen. I don't know if that makes sense. The same thing happens with thoughts. If you're fascinated by your thoughts, or if any thought, if you're in the eternal, the witnesser, if any thought is, made, is special, has a special relationship, or is identified, or is made meaning or magical, then suddenly it's like that expansive, timeless, eternal presence gets lost in a split second and one, get, one becomes enmeshed in that fantasy or in the projection of limited consciousness of the ego. Yes? But what about thoughts that are needed to go about our daily lives and our work? And do those thoughts take us out as well or can you still be there and have those thoughts? Okay, well, that's a great question. So, there, there, are, there are levels of consciousness. Yeah? And at different levels of consciousness, each level of consciousness will automatically attract you to different types of job and different types of functioning. 
What does that mean? It means that, let's say I was, um, let's say I'm working in the stock market and um, it's a very sort of ad addictive, adrenaline driven environment. If I start to do spiritual work and start to go into these more limitless present states, the vibration of my consciousness probably would no longer match. You know, I'd probably eventually want to leave the stock market. And I'd probably eventually start to be attracted to work, which is in alignment with my new level of consciousness. And if I leave, if I go to a more advanced level of consciousness, then I'll, again, at a certain point, I may no longer be attracted to that job. And I may at a certain point go to a different type of work, which is in, now in alignment with my new level of consciousness. So at each level of consciousness, something will be attracted, which is in alignment with that new level of consciousness. Now, but can I also think that also that's really helpful, but also that the thought, I mean thoughts, even just, not just job thoughts, but thoughts about even to come here, you know, to negotiate timings and fugues and you know, just to, to pay your electricity bill, that like thoughts, because that like, thoughts take us out of that place. So I'm saying even just about functional thinking. Well, you see, here's the thing with thoughts. Mm. The more, you, it's like, the more you do the observer, as you go up the levels of consciousness, you know, all thoughts become more and more meaningless. You know, well, let's take it also back to St. Francis as well. So one becomes more like, rather than the, the, the thinking being one's self, it's more like things are coming out of the present moment. You know, it's like everything starts to become spontan spontaneous intuitive. So it's no, it's more it's no longer like the ego, like one is trying to think about one how one's going to plan one's day. Everything spontaneously, intuitively arises out of the infinite, out of the now. Yes, and and one isn't really identified with the thoughts as being one's source. So it's like suddenly a thought comes on, like let's put the kettle on, and one is going there. It's not like you know, one's sense of self is not from the thinking and trying to plan into the future or the past. Everything is in the now. Everything starts to become more spontaneous, intuitive, automatically, just without the thinking mind being so much the thing that's doing it. So, but these are at a more advanced levels, but there's a gradual transition where you'll keep making thoughts, you keep making money thoughts less and less important, you see. And then one starts to tune in more into the spontaneous, intuitive thing. When, when thoughts within the ego are not be, if you're not willing to surrender the importance and the meaning of certain things, then that, the ego kind of retains that as an important task that it has to do. Whereas the things which are let go of as meaningless and, and surrendered, it's more like that intuitive, spontaneous consciousness starts to take that over, you know. Yeah. So where does um, where does goal setting come into it? Yes. Because at the end of it, you know, you can't actually go through life without some kind of diary. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I mean, uh, goal setting. I mean, you know, for me, there's levels of consciousness. The more spiritual work you do, the more you let go, and you don't have to. I mean, you, I mean, if you, I mean, you can be wherever you want to be, and that's fine. At certain levels of consciousness, you're always making goals. You're always trying to achieve goals. You're always planning how to make those goals. As you let go more and more, life becomes more spontaneous, intuitive. So it'd be like, see, if you're moving up to, let, let's take, you know, St. Francis, to be a channel means that it's not like the ego is now the thing that's trying to organize all the goals. It's like one has let go of the ego. It's like in this moment, everything is spontaneously, intuitively happening out of the present moment. Does that make sense? So, let, let me give you an example. So what kind of occupations do you go into then? Well, you know, again, that, that, that would be like, that would be, um, as I was saying earlier, so at each level of consciousness, you know, there'll be, a, there'll be the right career for that level of ego identification. So when I was very strongly in my ego, my ego wanted to be a stockbroker and a stockbroking analyst. As I let go of more and more stuff, you know, I've written a book, um, you know, I'm a spiritual teacher, uh, other things come to me, 
to do spontaneously, intuitively. So you gradually make a shift. If you wanted to go to higher levels of consciousness, you don't have to go. Then you're, you're letting you're letting everything happen in the moment. So you're not really trying to rely on your ego to run the show. You're trying to just be present and let come through you, let the universe reveal to you what's happening. There's no longer a you. You know, you, you disappear the ego you that's trying to control the future or the past. You become a clear channel for for the universe to orchestrate through. So you could say, you know, like if you I think one of the great things is the whirl, whirling dervishes. Everyone's heard of the whirling dervishes. Mm. You see, for me, the ego is not doing that. They're in that infinite state of... You see, they let, you let go of the ego, and it's like the universe dances the body. There's no longer an ego there trying to orchestrate anything. That would be the same with the saint. You know, it's no longer the ego saying, like, oh, what shall I be doing tomorrow? It's more like they're, in, you know, they're, they're receiving instructions from grace. Yeah. Don't, don't you think uh, yeah. there's got to be compromise somewhere on the line? Well, those are different levels of consciousness. When I, there, there, there is, everything is complete as it is. When I was in my ego, thinking at 100 miles an hour, that was what I was. I was goal setting, I wanted the next job, the next career. You know, that's what I was. I was being that level of consciousness. As I do more spiritual work, I become that. As I do more spiritual work and let go, I become that. And each one is what it is, you see. At a certain level of consciousness, I'm an extreme goal setter, thinking at 100 miles an hour, trying to become mega, mega successful. At certain levels of consciousness, that's no longer interesting. You become the new thing. Certain careers are no longer interesting. Mm. Goal setting becomes less and less interesting. Mm. One of the lessons in A Course in Miracles is so, um, I place the future in the hands of God. You know, I just place everything into the hands of God. I'm not going to hold on to my ego. Goal setting, forget goal setting. Not the next moment, even the next moment, forget that. We're just to be clear now, forget the ego totally. So there is no such thing as goal setting. We, so that, but that's at a certain level of consciousness. If you want to do goal setting, that's fine. You don't have to go there. You know. mm. want to be a stockbroker, I can just cling on to my ego more and, and go there. What time are you leaving? 5.30 or maybe 5.45. Because I want to do self-inquiry before you go. Okay. Yeah, because... Uh, um, um, so, um, so those are... I mean, you know, I mean, every level of consciousness is what it is. It's complete. You know, when I was, when I was in active addiction, that's me. In active addiction, you know. And when I do a bit more spiritual work, I am that thing of how much of my ego I'm left. I'm just that naturally what I am. And at a certain, you know, if you let go of enough of your ego, you are that, without you know just being in the being in the eternal presence. You see, it's just each each level of consciousness is totally complete and feels complete. Um, it's only when you do spiritual work that you can see the gradations of what it's like to be at various levels of spiritual work. Um, so. I did not. Can I just ask, isn't it possible to open this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. more than okay. Mm. Oh, great. Let's see. So, all right. So. Okay, so I think I did more or less answer all the questions, didn't I? Mm -hmm. uh,